Hey everybody! Uh, welcome to Cooking 101 in my tiny, tiny kitchen. Uh, I'm Jen, I'm a dietitian, and I started this show at the peak of the lockdown um, because people were cooking more and a lot of people were cooking for the first time and people didn't seem to know what to do or they were cooking the same thing over and over again and wanted some new ideas. So that's what this show is for. Um, today I am going to teach you all about zoodles, what to do with them, how to make them yourself even if you don't have any specific equipment for it. And uh, then we're going to make a uh, zoodle shrimp scampi because it's lots of butter which makes you feel like it's decadent and fatty and I'm going to teach you how to do it so it's not either of those things but it tastes like it. Um, so to start, zoodles, what are they? They are literally zucchini noodles. Um, zoodles have been a fad for a while. Uh, they've branched into other vegetables. You can get butternut squash zoodles. Um, I've seen yellow squash zoodles. Zucchini seems to kind of reign supreme right now. Um, and since they're named for zucchini, zoodles is stuck for everything you get now. But uh, it's basically any vegetable you take and create a noodle-like shape out of. Um, you can buy them in the store, and I will get to that in a little bit, or you can make them at home. And if you make them at home, uh, there is specific equipment that you can buy uh, called a spiralizer. It's a little crank machine with a blade at the end, and it literally just spirals apart the uh, vegetable so that you are left with these little curly Q noodles that you can do whatever you want with. Um, but I've never had a spiralizer, and I don't really feel the need to add that particular gadget to my already cramped kitchen. So what do you do when you don't have those things? Um, what I do, and what I was taught before spiralizers are really widely sold, you can get them on Amazon by the way, they're, they're not even that expensive, is you can make your own zoodles with just a vegetable peeler. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, so to start, you take your phallic object, you take a vegetable peeler, and you just take the skin off. We're not going to use the skin. You can use the skin. There's nothing wrong with the skin. The skin has lots of vitamins in it. The skin has some uh, fiber. The skin is good stuff, but not going to react the same way as the rest of the vegetable when it comes to making zoodles, so I'm just going to take the skin off completely. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you hold it, just that you have a good grip on it. Now when you take the skin off the stuff, it is really, really slippery. And I would not be surprised if there's some sort of gaff today, because it'll slip right out of my hands, but we'll see. Also, I'm going to refrain from making a lot of jokes that I could about this, because honestly, just holding it, it looks ridiculous. But I'm going to be classy about it. Make your own jokes. Okay, so now it's naked. Now what? Well, you actually just keep doing the same thing. Um, you're gonna just keep peeling it. This is your makeshift zoodle. Very easy stuff. Now, it's pretty broad and it's pretty thin. So I kind of call this zoodle fettuccine, just because fettuccine is a broader noodle. Um, when you buy it in the store, you make it in a spiralizer, it's a little bit more narrow and kind of squared off. So it's like a, I don't know, rectangular spaghetti? If you, if, I don't know if that's a shape. Um, but uh, it has more of a, a bite to it and people prefer that. So give me a sec. I'm just going to keep doing this for a second. Actually, you know what? I'm kind of ahead of the game and I'm not going to make you watch me peel all this, so I'm just going to take a few. But basically, you want to get down to the seeds and then stop. You obviously can't make a noodle out of seeds. And in the middle of every zucchini, there are uh, there's just seeds the whole length of this thing. If you cut it in half, you'd see the seeds. So I'll just show you that what that looks like real quick. Real fast doodle making. Here we go. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost, oh, there we go. Seeds. Oh, it's so lit. Okay, there we go. There's the seeds. So when you get to the seeds, stop. So we got a pile of zoodles. And when I said I was ahead of the ahead of the curve here, what I meant was by the magic of TV, 
I have already pre-pepped some zoodles. Here they are. They're all on a paper towel. Now you may ask me, why are they on a paper towel? And I will explain it. So there's two ways you can prepare zoodles. First one, which is the one I did for years, was you boil a pot of water and add salt. Not too much, maybe like a tablespoon. Um, and then you blanch it. What is blanching? Blanching is putting something in hot water really fast and taking it back out. Um, usually you don't leave it in for more than three minutes. Uh, it depends how much you want the thing cooked, but it's supposed to be a fast way of cooking it. And then you can run it under cold water so it stops cooking completely so you don't have mushy, mushy zoodles. So that's a fast way to do it. However, zucchini is like one of the wettest uh, vegetables. Here we go again with jokes. Um, that exists. It's just soaking wet. It is a very moist vegetable. I can't get away from the words. Okay, this is just going to be how it is today. Um, but it's it makes things really mushy when you cook it. Water is kind of the enemy of crispness. So if you want your zoodles to have a little bit more bite. Now the blanching is fine, especially if you do it quickly because it doesn't really overcook them. Um, but if you want to do what I'm going to do today, which is you, you would saute the zoodles in a pan. That's the second way of cooking it. Um, you want to get as much moisture out of there as possible. So that's why I have this big bed of paper towels lying here. Um, I put two down, put the zoodles on top, and I have two to put on top. What you're going to do is you're going to take a metric ton of salt, and you're going to just put it all over the zoodles, everywhere. Why salt? Salt makes water come out of vegetables. It's very good at that. It also makes this entirely too salty to eat, but that's a fixable thing. So just cover the whole thing in salt, make sure everything is nice and salty. Then you're gonna cover it up. And you're gonna find something with some heft. I have my notebook here. And you're gonna place it on top. And then you can place some other stuff on top just in case that's not enough heft. So I'm gonna put this thing of chicken broth on top for now. So then you're gonna just walk away and let the salt do its work. Um, this is going to draw all the water out of the vegetable so that it's nice and, uh, well, it's not gonna be dry, but it's gonna be a lot less moist than it was. Um, that will give you a much better texture in your zoodle, something that more resembles pasta than a vegetable. So once you draw all the water out, and we're gonna leave this to do that for a while, um, then you gotta rinse it, and I know that's counterintuitive because you just took all the water out. Why are you putting more water in? Uh, put it in a colander, one of these guys, and rinse it so thoroughly, so, so thoroughly. The salt will stay on that vegetable if you don't, and it tastes not so great, like eating handfuls of salt might taste. So rinse the bejesus out of it, and then once you do that, you can put it back on some different, different paper towels. You don't want the salty ones. We're getting away from the salt. Um, and dry it out again. The water, when you rinse it, will not go back in the vegetable. It doesn't work that way. Um, we're just trying to get as much of the salt off as possible. So it really, this process is dependent on how thoroughly you wash the salt off. How much salt you put on, and how much salt you take off. Um, once it's dry again, then we put it in a pan. Yes, yeah, saute it up however you like to saute. And then you're, you got your zoodles. That's how simple they are. Uh, literally seven minutes of explanation there. So, and it takes about as long. I mean, the, the getting the salt on and soaking it and getting the water off and all that stuff, that's going to take a few minutes too. But this is another one of those, you can have this on your plate ready to go in half an hour meals. And that's what I like to do because nobody wants to come home and cook all the time. That sucks. Uh, especially when you're tired and you've been working all day. So easy stuff. Now, let's say you're like, that's already too much work, Jen. I don't really want to do that. Well, I'm a big fan of relying on grocery stores to do the work for you. Um, this are just some store-bought zoodles from Whole Foods. Um, they call them zucchini noodles because I, maybe zoodles are trademarked, I don't know. Uh, you can find this in the produce section, probably next to the salad. That's where I found it, next to the pre-washed greens. It's just pre-prepped veggies. 
And again, they sell butternut squash ones, yellow squash ones, zucchini ones. So I really like buying store-bought, not just because it saves me this process, um, but because for some reason, these zucchini noodles are super dry already. And there's a little condensation in the packaging. But if I open this up, like just touching it, it's really not, it's like this feels slimy when you're taking the zoodles off with the vegetable peeler. Um, this just has a little condensation. So I'm really just gonna pat it a little bit, but it's not the same thing. So when you buy store-bought zoodles, you don't have to do the salt trick. You can just start creating. So I'm just patting this down. So, let's make some scampi. Uh, I had a uh, friend ask if I could teach some fish, and I will do another episode that does fish, but today I figured I'd start with shrimp. It's really easy to prep. Uh, it's good for you. It's got a little cholesterol, not too much. People always ask me, should I stop eating shrimp if they have high cholesterol? No. Um, I mean, if, if every point counts, I've said this before about eggs, if every point of your cholesterol counts, uh, then yeah, consider taking cholesterol foods out of your diet. But otherwise, unless you are like in dire straits with your labs, don't worry about the cholesterol and shrimp. It's minimal. It's got omega-3 fatty acids, which are great for the body, great for your heart, great for your brain. Um, it's good stuff. So shrimp scampi is made with a lot of butter and you wouldn't really think of it as a healthy dish. But I have played around with this recipe a little bit. Um, if I'm being totally honest, I, this is modified off of a keto recipe, and you all know how I feel about keto. It's bullshit. Um, I don't like keto because it's not a good way to eat and it's not healthy. However, they did come up with a nice semi-modified shrimp scampi, and I've modified it further to take a little of the fat out because you don't need to eat fat, and you don't need to be on a diet of fat to lose weight. Um, a little fat is fine. I'm totally fine with butter. I love butter. It's a little bit addictive, not gonna lie. Uh, but you don't need a sh metric ton of it. And there's a way to make little go a very, very long way. So, but we're gonna use some. I'm very excited because I love butter. I am using salted butter so that I can put minimum salt on as seasoning. Uh, you can use unsalted butter if you're super, super worried about your blood pressure. That's an easy substitute. Uh, I'm going to cut two tablespoons of butter. That's going to go in my pan. Now, here's the secret to making a little butter go a long way. Now, two tablespoons of butter, not nothing. But we can leave it at that if we want. And here's why. When you use butter, you cut it with olive oil. The olive oil and the butter mix together and then you can't really tell the difference in what's olive oil and what's butter. It just all tastes like delicious butter. Butter and olive oil go together so well. Fats love each other and they combine with each other seamlessly. Um, it's not like doing olive oil and vinegar, which is two totally different things. Oil and water don't mix. We know this. But fats and fats, oils and oils, they love each other. So you start with two tablespoons of butter for the shrimp scampi sauce, and you can just leave it at that. Hmm, butter is delicious. Now I'm going to add, I mean, the, the recipe calls for one tablespoon of olive oil. However, the recipe calls for a little more butter later on. So I'm gonna put the equivalent of about two tablespoons of olive oil in with my butter. Yep. That's gonna be like a nice saucy buttery mess. That's the scampi sauce. It's already a lot less fatty than your typical shrimp scampi sauce. All right, so just let the butter do, uh, melt. It's already combining with the olive oil. You can't tell what is what. It's just a lovely, salty, fatty mess that makes everything taste better. And that's what really makes everything matter more, is if it tastes good. All right. Butter is in the pan. Olive oil is in the pan. The next thing we are putting in the pan. So, sorry vegans and vegetarians, this is a pescatarian dish today. But uh, up until this point, everything was vegan. It's just, we got the butter going, now we got the shrimp going. We're making shrimp scampi. If you don't want to make shrimp scampi, you don't have to. 
You can make seitan scampi. I'm sure that tastes good, especially with a metric ton of olive oil and salt and delicious fatty goodness. So I've got raw shrimp, never frozen, and I have their shells. You do not have to do this. Peeling shrimp is gross. Uh, if you want tips, I basically pull the legs off and then the shell kind of pulls apart from there. But it is not for everyone and I understand that. So if you don't want to do this, frozen shrimp is totally acceptable. Pre-cooked shrimp, totally acceptable. I do it this way because I've found that raw shrimp, to me, tastes really good. Uh, better than anything else. But it's not going to impact the nutrients. And if this grosses you out, don't worry about it. I'm just turning my, uh, turning my heat at basically as low as it goes because I don't want to throw this in here and have it shoot up fat in every direction. Low heat is preferable when you're cooking with a lot of oil because oil spatters everywhere. Also, always wear a shirt. Wear two shirts if you want. I once had, in my early days of cooking, a pan full of butter splash up and hit and go right through my tank top and I had a lovely burn mark across my belly. It looked really, really attractive. So just be careful when you're using a lot of oil or butter in your recipe. So I got my shrimp. Why do I have the shells? Shells have flavor and they're usually used to make stock. So if someone was making like a shrimp bisque, they would use the shells and cook them down in water with some spices and that would be the shrimp stock. I am going to make shrimp butter because I think that tastes awesome. So I have intact shells. Everything is connected. That way I can use some, uh, what are they called? Oh, I don't even have them. Uh, you know, the grabby things. Okay, I'm missing a word completely, but I know where to find them. Tongs! They're called tongs. All right. Tongs. There we go. You know, just pull them out from the dishwasher, even though they're not clean. It's totally fine. I, I do pre-wash everything before I put it in the dishwasher, so I'm not, like, totally disgusting. Um, and I know what I used to cook with this last time, so it's also not going to cross-contaminate everything. But, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a gross person sometimes, so you'll just have to live with that. Anyway, back to what we were doing. Shrimp shells. They're going in with the shrimp. Now, shrimp cooks really, really fast. Uh, once this is done cooking, I'm gonna just keep my eye on it. I can pull the shrimp out, but I can still keep cooking the shells a little bit because I don't have to eat them. I'm not gonna worry about whether they're overcooked. Uh, and that's gonna impart more shrimp flavor into the butter, and I'm just trying to infuse the butter with as much flavor as possible. So we're putting the shrimp in the pan. And I actually cautiously turned it super low, but you know what? Nothing's going to burn me, so that's fine. So I put the shrimp shells in. I've left the tails on so they're easy to identify and I can use tongs to pull them out and chuck them right in the trash can when I'm done. Okay, the shrimp is in and I'm going to wash my hands because I just handled raw meat. Wash your hands a lot when you handle raw meat. That is the name of the game. Oh, we already have one of those. There we go. So I've started the shrimp. I'm going to put the heat up a little bit more. I was a little overly cautious, but better to do that than... Have a giant belly burn, I say. That's my motto, really. Better to do that than have a belly burn. All right. So the shrimp is going to cook. Shrimp cooks really fast. Do not walk away from your shrimp. They are going to turn pink, and that's when they're done. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on this. I'm going to move everything around a little bit. Make sure it's not sitting here burning. Make sure the butter has a nice tour of all the shrimp and shrimp shells. So I'm using six shrimp. You don't have to use six shrimp. You can use eight shrimp. You can use 12 shrimp. How much shrimp you want is up to you. These shrimp are gigantic, so I did not need to use a bunch, and uh, I'm not sharing this with my husband because I'm very greedy, so I didn't get any for him. So I'm just cooking my shrimp up. If you guys can see, like right here, it's starting to already cook. A cooked shrimp looks like a pink shrimp. That's That just means it's cooked. If you buy them frozen and they're already pink, that means they are already cooked. They just need to be heated up. They don't need to be cooked extensively. Uh, don't overcook them because they become like rubber. And you don't want rubber shrimp because that's not fun. 
So I'm just moving it around. The shells are also turning pink because that's what shrimp do when they're cooking. All right, something just shot into the air. Like I said, fat likes to really attack everything. You don't want it too high with the heat. All right, I'm gonna flip the shrimp over so the other side can cook. Fast, fast stuff happening here. to rinse my tongs off real quick just in case they are super gross. Hello everybody out there, or at least Lisa and Alan, thank you for watching. This is the interlude where I wash things and talk to the camera and it's super awkward. Alright, my tongs are clean, the shrimp is almost done. You can also tell that the shrimp is done by touching it with the tongs, your fork, or whatever, they're gonna get very rigid, where they used to be pretty soft. That's a pretty good rule of thumb for cooking any kind of animal product, is it gets more rigid the longer you cook it. And when it's super rigid, it's done. Um, if you don't finish the shrimp entirely cooking them, that's okay, because they're gonna go back in the pan for the final countdown. So these shrimp are pretty good. I'm going to remove them to a plate. I got a little bit of a nice uh, brown Maillard reaction there with that brown crispiness going on. Alright, so we are stuck with the shells. Like I said, you can use the shells, leave them in for as long as you want. They just impart more flavor. They're awesome. But I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me cook shells because that's not really what this show is about. So I'm going to take them out and chuck them in the trash. You don't have to save them. You can if you want. You can actually still use these to make stock if you want a shrimp stock for any reason in particular. Uh, not a lot of people make shrimp bisque, but if you're ever making like shrimp and grits or shrimp etouffee, they actually do use a shrimp stock for both those things and it's awesome. And I can't recommend it enough if you ever want to have something really delicious. All right, so I'm going to turn the heat down again. Ooh, almost off, but not quite. Heat is down. So the next thing we have to add is garlic. So I pre chop most of my garlic, but just as a reminder, how do we peel garlic? I'm going to use the butt, or not the butt, but I'm going to use the flat of my uh, knife here. I'm going to lean on it careful not to cut myself in the palm. Be very careful if you do that. You can also just use your palm and lean on it, but you crush the garlic clove and all of the paper comes right off. Bam. That is how you peel garlic in a really, really fast way. So I'm going to just chop this stuff up. You want to mince up the garlic, not too small, but enough that it's, it's in little chunks. And then I'm just gonna add all the garlic to the pan in my shrimp and butter sauce. Now here's where I deviate a little from the recipe. The butter is cooked down a little and it's concentrated in flavor. The recipe calls for adding uh, two more tablespoons of butter. That will make it very buttery. It will make it very delicious. But for me, that's a lot of butter. Not something a dietitian would recommend. It's something Jen would recommend as just a food lover and taste lover of butter and all that stuff. But I try to make this show healthy when I can, except for my grilled cheese off last week, which was the opposite of that, but it was super fun. Um, but today we're gonna get back on the health track a little. So instead of adding two tablespoons of butter, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. Just make this a nice scampy sauce, delicious. So we are browning the garlic a little bit. Again, don't walk away from your pan. You don't want to overcook the garlic. This, because the pan was already pretty hot, is pretty much good to go. So we got our garlic olive oil butter mix here. Um, now I'm going to add my zoodles, which I dried off by patting them with a paper towel. They're not too wet. In they go. 
try not to get the liner in if you're using pre-made zoodles. Just be careful of that. All right, zoodles also cook pretty quickly. You'll notice they'll start to get a little translucent, AKA a little see-through. Then they are super done. Um, I don't want to overcook these because I don't want a mushy mess. Yes, getting the salt, uh, getting the water out helps them not be mushy, but they can still get a little bit too soft. So you don't want to overcook. So I'm making sure they're all coated in this delicious olive oil, garlic, butter, shrimp extravaganza in here. All right. Then you add a little bit of chicken broth, about a quarter of a cup, not too much. This is just to kind of help the uh, sauce really get going here. So I've added my chicken broth. And I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit just to bring the chicken broth to a simmer. All right, there's no room whatsoever in this fridge. There we go. There's no room in my kitchen and there's no room in my tiny fridge, but this is the way New York apartments work and I've made it work this far, so I'm gonna just keep going. So I'm cooking my zoodles up in this delicious broth sauce. If you are a pescatarian, and so far I've been aligning with everything you eat, just use a vegetable broth. You don't have to use chicken broth. It's literally any liquid. You can even use water if you want. I like broth stocks, all that stuff, because it imparts more flavor. Um, but if meat is not your jam, then vegetable broth, you can try a seafood broth, that might overpower the shrimp flavor, so I wouldn't recommend that one. But we're just cooking everything. And then uh, I'm going to sprinkle a little oregano over everything. Doo, doo, doo. And then I'm going to finish it off with a little lemon juice, because remember, lemon is a really good substitute for adding more salt. It imparts flavor, it brings out flavor. It's an acid, so it really helps things kind of move along the groove when you're cooking. Just watch out for the seeds that are trying to sneak in there. There we go. So getting that good lemon juice in there. You only need half a lemon for this recipe. That's what it calls for. Don't have to go crazy. You can go crazy. Lemon is a delicious flavor, and if you want to use more, I'm not going to stop you. It's just going to turn into lemon shrimp scampi instead of shrimp scampi. Alright. So everything is simmering really nicely. Kind of the goal here is to cook the sauce down a little bit so it thickens and it gets on everything. And then you have a nice thick scampi sauce. So this is about medium heat. Everything is kind of bubbling away very nicely, exactly how I want it. Nothing is popping out of the pan terribly. I'm not getting spattered in oil. So you just want to kind of shrink down the sauce amount. And I may have added a little too much because I like to eyeball things instead of uh, measuring it. That's okay. If you add too much broth, uh, just let it cook down a little bit longer. You're kind of reducing it until it's more sauce-like and less soup-like. Um, yes, I will extend the cooking time of the zoodles. Yes, it's not totally ideal, but it's okay. Right, this end is not getting enough love, so we're just going to bring that to a boil. Right, heat's more kind of like at high right now, and that's because I put a little too much liquid in. I also made a mess. Just got to wipe that up. All right, so we're boiling down the sauce. Boiling down the sauce also concentrates the flavor, so it's just a good way to cook everything. When you get the sauce to a specific point, which is like, I don't know, not liquidy to liquid soup, when you get it more to like a bottom of the pan sauce type consistency, then you're gonna add back the shrimp and finish cooking. All the shrimp going back in. And again, if you undercook the shrimp a little bit, that's okay. Better than overcooking. This will finish off the cooking process real fast. Especially if you get it in that thick sauce area. 
Also, cooking with this uh, broth helps to keep everything moist so the shrimp won't overcook further. So everything is doing very nicely here. My stove is uneven, so it looks like there's more broth than there is. We're still cooking it down. And it's uh, just about 3.30. So again, this is pretty, pretty quick process. So, here is my shrimp scampi. It looks awesome. That's going to be my lunch today. I am very excited. And that's all you have to do. So, again, zoodles are some of the easiest things ever that you will ever cook with. Uh, very minimal effort has to be put in. If you have a spiralizer, that can be kind of a pain, um, but it's more because you have to set it up and then you have to clean it once it's done. Uh, during the process, it's, it's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory to use, but it's a very fast meal. Uh, it's not gonna go over half an hour and you can throw something together that's a delicious, seemingly decadent pasta meal, but instead of there being high calorie pasta, most of that meal is gonna be veggies. And that's one of my core values for teaching people how to eat healthy, is at least half your meal should be vegetables. And this is one of the easiest ways to do it because this makes most of your meal vegetables, which is how we should all be eating. It's, it's very good for the body. It's very good for calorie control. Uh, gives you lots of nice vitamins, minerals, boosts your immune system, all that good stuff. So I love zoodles for that reason, and I can't recommend them enough. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. And thank you again for tuning in. Um, if you want to contribute to this show in any way, uh, you can send a donation to my Venmo, which is at JSRockRD. Um, all donations go towards helping me purchase uh, everything I do for the show. Um, if you can't afford to do that, these are weird economic times, and I want to keep this show free, so there's no pressure. This is just voluntary donation if you want to. Um, but thank you guys for supporting the show in any way that you can, and tune in next week, and I'll see you then.